All right. So now uh, we're going to say nonlinear equations. And we're going to solve one uh, using uh, fixed point iteration. Fixed point iteration. Okay, so this is this is an example of solving a nonlinear equation. And to get started, let's write out uh, a couple of uh, nonlinear equations. Uh, so uh, we have, uh, let's say, uh, f1. Well, here let me let me just grab some nonlinear equation. All uh, right, here, and and we'll even we'll even turn it into uh, an f. So let's say we have x squared plus x y equals ten. Okay, and let's say we have another equation uh, y plus three x y squared equals fifty seven. All right, so here's a couple of equations, and we can we can separate them, and we can say f1 uh, of x y right is equal to x squared uh, plus x y minus whoops minus ten equals zero. We can do the same thing with this other one. We call it f2 of x y equals all right, so we say uh, y plus 3xy squared minus 57 equals 0. All right, so uh, we're set now, and we can we can apply the approach. Now let's recall recall the approach of uh, fixed point iteration. Fixed point iteration was uh, we have some function uh, f of x, and we want to solve it. Uh, where f of x equals zero, and so what we did is we we said uh, we're going to rearrange this function f of x to uh, to have the form uh, x equals uh, g of x. Okay, and and so if we can do that, then we just we just say x i plus one equals g of x i and then we just iterate on that and that's how we do it it's just a reminder of what that is and so now let's turn uh, this system into that form uh, now we're gonna do this in two ways uh, but let's just start one way and so turning this system into that form uh, we're gonna say uh, so let's start with this equation okay and we're gonna solve this for x and so we're gonna say uh, x y well let's do 10 minus x y no 10 minus x squared yeah let's do that 10 minus x squared uh, equals x y okay and solving that for x let's divide this by y divide this by y so that cancels and then we have, so there's going to say x equals 10 minus x squared divided by y. All right, now let's do that for the other equation, uh, for this equation. So let's go, uh, let's see, 57. I'm right here, taking this one down to here. Okay, so I got 57 uh, minus, because that's easy, right? And and I'm solving this for y, right? Um, I can just I can do this all in one step. Okay, bringing this down, do this all in one step. See, I just say y equals uh, 57 minus 3xy squared. Perfect. Okay, so now I've got it, and so so applying the iteration, then of course uh, recognizing this, we're just going to say uh, x uh, two equals uh, well, let's write it out in general. X i plus one equals ten x ten minus x i squared over 
yi, and then y, i plus 1, equals uh, 57 minus 3xy squared. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to need a guess for xy. We need an x, uh, let's say x naught, and a y naught. Now, it just so it just so happens that the actual roots uh, of this, the the one we're looking for, that's x equals two, y equals three. Okay, so these are the actual roots, and that's something that I know just from cheating here. Uh, but but it's going to help us evaluate evaluate this method. So x naught, then uh, let's say let's just add. Uh, Let's say 1.5, uh, subtract half, and then y equals, y naught equals 3.5. Okay, so now we have an x naught and y naught, so we can start iterating this. And um, again, we're, uh, if you'll recall, uh, I'm lazy, and uh, so <laughs> I don't want to do all these computations by hand. So uh, we're going to switch over to MATLAB. All right, so now we got MATLAB here. We can we can start plugging it in. Uh, so uh, now we say x naught equals uh, 1.5. Y naught equals whoops equals uh, 3.5, right? 3.5. Okay. X naught equals 1.5. Y naught equals 3.5. So now we can just say x1. All right. X1 equals uh, 57. No, 10. 10 minus uh, x naught squared and I think this was beeping at me because I didn't put my parentheses there divided by um, y uh, naught okay so that's x1 so we get 2.2 and then we go whoops let's just start at y1 equals uh, and that was um, 57 Minus, let's see what what was it? So fifty mi seven minus three x y squared, three well, three times x one y not squared, and and I just used uh, the x one here because uh, we've already got it. So why don't I use the latest value? So using x one here, and then and then y not because that's the latest value we have for y. Oh, minus 24. All right. So it looks like it's it's not getting us there. Looks like we're diverging. Uh, now let's, but let's check x2, and we'll do x1 here and y1 here. Oh, minus 2.09. That's not getting us there very fast. Y1. So let's call it y2. And x2 and y1. Uh, 429. Okay. So you can see that this approach is diverging. And if we flip back over here, uh, we can see, uh, well, we can get an idea of why it's diverging. And in particular, we get an idea of why it's diverging. If you look right here, we have this squared term here. And here as well, we've got this squared term here. That actually turns out to be not so good of a thing. And so uh, what we can do is rewrite these in a slightly different way where instead of having a squared where it's just getting bigger and bigger uh, we can we can actually rewrite it to have a square root and so uh, instead of rewriting the first equation the way we did let's let's try something different okay so we had uh, x here we go we had x squared plus xy minus 10 equals 0 and y, let's let's just copy these um, Let's copy these down here so I don't have to keep looking. All right, so now so we're going to try again. All right, try again. And that's just for our reference. So let's say uh, x squared equals um, an, uh, 10 minus xy and uh, 3xy squared equals uh, 57 minus, well, yeah, 57 minus y, because this is just in the way. 
All right, so that there we go, and now we can uh, finish this. We could say then x is equal to the square root of 10 minus xy, and with this we can say then that y uh, equals uh, because we can divide this by 3x and divide this by 3x. Okay, y equals the square root of 57 minus y over 3x. And I'll show you here, this is going to be a lot, lot better. Uh, all right, so let's, let's see what happens. Um, flip over to MATLAB, and we'll have to clear everything out so we don't, um, so we don't make sure we're not using old variables. Uh, but we can go back through and define our x naught and our y naught. Okay, those are we're going to use the same initial guesses, but then instead we're going to say x1 equals, uh, and again this was the square root, right? Square root of switch over here, square root of 10 minus xy, 10 minus x uh, 0 y x naught y naught. All right, I think that's right. 10 minus the square root of xy, yes. All right, and then y1 uh, equals the square root of, and I think we need another one here. Oh, it was like 57 here. Let me see. 57 minus y all over 3x. Uh, 57 minus y naught over 3, 3x1, because we don't need to use x naught. We've got an updated one. Uh, all right, so we have 2.17 and 2.8. That looks a little bit better. Um, let's do x2 now. So x2 equals, so we use x1 and y1. Uh, 1 1.94, that's good. Uh, now y2, uh, square root of y, and we use y1 and x2 here. Uh, 3.04, okay, so we're getting there. So 1.94, 3.04, that's actually fairly close. Um, x3, 2, y2, I should go one more time, and y3, 3, y2, x3, and 2.98. So you can see we're, we're, we're zooming right in on those roots with this method, and so there we go, finding the, the roots of a nonlinear equation. And then also, I guess the other thing that this example shows is that you need uh, to to be careful about uh, about your your whether your your method is converging or diverging.